YouTube, what's going on guys? It's your boy Decades. We're back. Another episode. Star Citizen. It is Invictus Week. And today we have the Javelin. It's the only really thing the only thing I thought was interesting. And again, you know, I don't do Star Citizen coverage on an everyday basis as my YouTube channel. It's just more I just love start playing it. And the javelin, though, the thing is huge. It's absolutely huge. So I figured, hey, why not? Why not go take it for, uh, take a tour of it anyway? So, um, we're just gonna go ahead and jump on the shuttle. Please clear the hatch. Shuttle. Head on over, and jump in our new ship. I don't know where I got this ship from. I don't know if they loaned us some ships for this week. But I've never, I don't have this ship in my ship inventory normally. You'll see it when we get there. Um, but look at here. I, I, I arrived. It said, it said I was able to get off. I tried to get off and I died a slow death. Yeah, wasn't good. Even hit my head right there. So this part here was kind of pretty. Hello. Look at how, this looks really nice. Welcome look at this. Back. systems reacted well to the treatment. Now you may experience some slight vertigo, but you have been cleared to leave. So I did notice while I was here at Orison that, that the game was running choppy. It was uh, laggy, if you will. And look at her. She's typing on a <laughs> an imaginary screen. So I jump back on the tram, shuttle, train. Here's the, here's the uh, new ship. I've never had this before. But I know one thing, it, it gives me an appreciation for how nimble these small ships are. It's, uh, I don't even know the name of this ship. But it's pretty nice though. And it's really nimble. I remember when I was flying with it, I'm like, wow, this, after coming from the Hercules, right it's night and day difference man because of course the size but it's really 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 nimble this thing turns on a dime it's like going from driving a bus to driving a corvette but every time i play star citizen guys i, I kid you not i'm in awe look at this look at what you're able to do right jump in a ship hyper jump Go to a different planet. <laughs> Dock at a freaking spaceport. Man, it's, this game is has come so far and it runs so well compared to where it was back when I started playing in 2017. So anyway, here I am going to the destination where we can observe this javelin. So I'm going to let you guys see the outside there. And I loaded up a, a video for you guys that I, I dug up from Star Citizen's website where they go into a little detail about this javelin. All right, so I'm going to let you guys check that out, and I'll see you in a bit. The, the Javelin was, was really kind of a byproduct of we needed another, another capital ship supplied to the UE uh, in the game. Um, we already had the Idris. Um, we knew it was going to be Aegis uh, manufactured. So I kind of wanted to extend the style and aesthetic of the, the Idris into the Javelin. Um, not only for the interior stuff, but also the exteriors. So from a production point of view, the, the, the Javelin, we had the wealth of experience that we've, we'd have we learned from, from developing the Idris. Um, and really kind of, we could almost kind of, so we say, hit the ground running. Um, so there was a lot of similarities in the aesthetic and, and the general kind of design between the Idris and the Javelin. It's really about kind of taking that aesthetic and those spaces and recycling. You kind of hear me on about the 60-40 split recycling about 60% of the Idris and then putting the 40% spin on, on the Javelin for the interiors. The exterior production wise is really a case of 
take what works on the eyes, the shaders and the eye, and, and, and the textures and, and whatnot. The model is always going to be unique. There's there's kind of nothing you can do about that. Um, but if I put the Idris next to the Javelin, like I say, the, the key result that I'm after is that they both are from the same fleet. They're both from the same manufacturer. Uh, and and really the, the production cycle of the Idris is pretty much the production cycle of the Javelin. Um, they, they, they both go kind of hand in hand. When, when we started the Javelin, it was the first thing you have to do is the floor plan. We have to go through all the stuff that we need. So you've got the gravity drive, the reactors, mess hall, barracks. Um, so you have to kind of think about these things from the ground up when, you, when you're when you planning the interior layout of the ship. And what I'm really pleased about with the Javelin is that we, we managed to get three concise decks um, kind of planned out. So if you look at the ship from the side, the lower decks are engineering and, and it's kind of very hot and, and sweaty and a, a workman's kind of place, right? And then you hit the mid-decks, which is habitation. Uh, and that's, again, it's no mistake. You kind of, uh, first class on a Boeing is up front. There's no engine noise and stuff. The, the middle of the Javelin, theoretically, would be the quietest area of, of, the, of the ship. Um, so that's all kind of laid out correctly. And then you go to the top deck, which is the technical area. So you've probably heard me talk about like the archetypes before, um, which is technical, engineering, uh, habitation, and medical. Um, if you look at any any kind of section of the javelin from any angle, you can see clear, concise um, um, breakouts of, of those of those archetypes. They've all got their place, like an architect's designed it properly, right? Um, and that's what you get from the javelin, which I'm, I'm really pleased about, because then it means that you get this clear, concise cut between habitation, between engineering and between technical. Um, whereas, you know, some of the other ships, they kind of have fallen a bit where you'll go from a technical area into a habitation and back into a technical area. That doesn't happen on, on, on the Javelin. It's, it's extremely like per deck. If one section of the ship gets damaged or goes down, it's very much like um, a huge cruise liner. So if, if, if that hull gets hit, it will shut itself down. So we've got these huge bulkheads with massive doors um, that kind of will will just go, okay, you're out now, shut down, and then it's up for the engineer to start rerouting power. The Idris has this huge hangar that kind of runs through the center of the ship. The, the Javelin doesn't. Um, it has like a very kind of small, almost like a, a utility hangar um, for a drop ship. It is cool though, the hangar, the, the best thing about the hangar is the floor. Dan ingeniously designed it. it. It pretty much kind of becomes the door. Essentially, you have to land on a platform and then that platform lowers in. But that platform when it's up is actually the doors, quite cleverly. And when you're actually inside the hangar and you see everything kind of moving up from traffic control, it's pretty awesome. So the main differences between the Idris and, and the Javelin is we've obviously got the hangar space uh, difference. It doesn't really kind of carry as many craft. It's, got, it's not got its own utility vehicle, but it has got an awful lot of weaponry. The, the whole ship's pretty much kind of caked in turrets. Um, and we've done this really cool thing uh, on, on the back of the ship where the remote turrets that are actually on the track system, at the moment when you're flying towards a ship, you kind of don't know if a turret's in operation or not, um, unless it kind of goes down inside the hull or something like that. And, and not a lot of our remote turrets do that. Um, but what we've done is we put the whole turret on a track system. So when they're not manned, they rotate back and go to the back of the ship between the thrusters. So they're in the most shielded area when they're not being used. Um, but that way, as a player, when you're approaching one of these things, you know if it's uh, if it's got its turrets up in defence or not. These huge things have gone way past just being a very pretty asset in space. They're 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 completely functional, uh, and they're also kind of extremely kind of fun to run around and have have a shootout. So, my background is FPS multiplayer maps. I run around ships looking at kind of gameplay. Um, and how you can make interesting gunplay and all that kind of stuff and, and making sure the level's balanced. On the ship production side of things, we've got to keep quite a few people happy. So obviously there's the backers who, who you know, they're, they're, without them, none of this would happen. So we have to kind of take their feet back on board. We've done the Big Guns trailer back in November, I think it was. It was for, yeah, for, for Citizen Con, um, um, or around about that time. The ship has gone through a couple of design changes on the exterior since it first went out, simply because in the UK we have a habit of making things bigger, um, which has a domino effect to everything, which is certainly the case uh, on this. There was a specific shot in that video that I'd done, and um, sorry, Toby done that one, actually. And um, it, showed the, it showed the bridge, and of course, there's a crossbar 
across the bridge and, and it kind of was blocking the captain's view. If he, if he, he would have to get to a certain point in the bridge to kind of see. So we saw that, we saw the feedback on the forums and, and we've gone back and, and remedied that and we've taken that as an opportunity then to actually kind of generally just make the ship's bridge kind of feel a lot more kind of tangible, a lot better. Um, and we've also got the cutscenes going in now um, for that stuff for Squadron. So with Hannes and myself, we're looking at it and how we can flood as much kind of natural light into these areas. So there's some very kind of cool windows that are turning up. Um, and, and the Javelin is actually kind of far more so than the, than the Idris has, has far more exterior views throughout the whole ship. I've actually put a, quite a significant amount of man hours uh, into it, not myself, but we uh, focus has shifted onto it because we're at the point now where I, I pretty much kind of want to support design for the Squadron 42 side of things. And for us to be able to do that, the ship needs to be at a certain kind of point, okay? Because the, the Javelin plays an integral role um, for a, a, a part of Squadron, which I can't talk about, but yeah, it, it's, it's pretty cool. We have to work with the writers on a daily basis. Uh, it's never as black and white as the writers will, you know, kind of write something, we make it. It's, it's very much a kind of a 50-50 thing. There's a lot of backwards and forwards. So, you know, we may end up kind of blocking out a new area and then that, that may kind of feed back into the, the script somehow and into, into, you know, the writers doing something far more creative than what, what I would originally have, have kind of thought about. But it also works the other way. Um, so the writers, you know, they'll come up with ideas that feed our, our inspiration. It, 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 this is where it gets really kind of complicated. So from, from an art production side of things, we, we hand the ship off to tech design. Tech designer then going to go and do their pass with obviously the balancing of the weapons, the balancing of the thrusters, the manoeuvrable thrusters. But then also with, with this, as I, as I mentioned, it plays an integral role in Squadron. So the design team on, on Squadron uh, are also kind of expecting a certain version of it, um, which, we need to, which we need to produce as well off the back of the PU version that, that this put together. It's just this kind of thing about kind of Make, making a game or making making an IP or or anything along that lines in this industry is just just a it's a very human thing um, that takes a lot of people from a lot of different disciplines to kind of get on and work together and that's just a, a, a real kind of small part of that it's challenging but it's but it's it's massively rewarding as well. Part of this year's Invictus celebrations, I'd like to invite you to take a look around and get an up-close look at an active military vessel. Some of the actual crew members have graciously volunteered their time to explain what life is like aboard the ship. I would like to remind you that the entire ship is not available for exploration, so please be respectful of unauthorized areas. Thank you, and enjoy your visit. All right, guys, so from here, what I'm going to do is throw on a little bit of uh, music and just explore the ship, let you guys see what it's like. Warhammer, a real problem for all sizes of ship. 
hence why we can be tasked to operate independently on patrols without support from the rest of the battle group. During the Xeno threat incursion, our gunners were responsible for the destruction of over 70 hostile elements and several capital ships, as well as protecting the ship from incoming ordnance. As a special treat, we've safety this turret so you can get a taste of what it feels like to be a gunner. All the weapons have been deactivated, so don't worry about accidental discharge. But I'll remind you this is an active military vessel, so be respectful all the same. Thank you, and have a great Invictus. Alright, let's settle down. My name's Lieutenant Commander Alderman. I run the turret complement aboard the Warhammer. That means I'm in charge of coordinating fires in our very service units in that station and all those attacks around the combat center. But when the answer comes back, I strive to keep my team sharp by running for engagement training and the station. Now, that's the same thing. Hi folks, welcome to the Warhammer. I am leading Starman Detmer, and this, as you probably guessed, is one of the two barracks on the ship. And I know, I know, you must be thrilled to see where Navy personnel sleep. And let me be the first to tell you, it's every bit as exciting as promised. Javelins are pretty great when it comes to sleeping arrangements, as they have enough bunks for the full crew, which is amazing because it avoids situations known as hot bunking where you swap out bunks with somebody on the opposite shift, and that is horrible. Uh, this one time on my old ship, I had to share with this guy who had just the worst smelling socks. Um, and I'm talking, you know, the military could have weaponized it kind of bad. And I had to try and fall asleep with that every day. So, uh, yeah, after that, these bunks are a, a dream. <laughs> And I'm just thinking that, uh, actually, I don't think my CEO would like me talking about how bad hot bunking is. So, maybe just forget I said anything. Uh, anyway, uh, each one has special slots for personal effects, um, and is capable of sealing you up to give you a little privacy. People are always moving around the barracks. Sleeping schedules shift slightly too, so they can activate the full crew at a moment's notice if the ship enters heavy combat, you know. So you, you're kind of always sleeping with one eye open. I mean, we get short sleep schedules if we are patrolling dangerous space, so... I mean, you're already grabbing sleep when you can. And... Sorry, I am rambling. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I'm not sure what to tell you. This is where we sleep. Not a whole lot of mystery to it. But I hope this has been enlightening. Please have a look around if you like, but don't touch anything in the bunks, as this is an active ship. And everything in here is the property of the crew, so be cool.
Javelin class destroyer was originally built by Aegis Dynamics and has been in active service since 2832. Launching under the command of Captain Omar Singh, the ship initially served as a combat support vessel in the Second Fleet, Sixth Battle Group, a posting that put it close to the Van Duel front. The Warhammer saw action during the fall of Caliban in 2884, where it protected retreating civilian and naval forces when the system ultimately fell, earning a ribbon for valor in the process. For the next several decades, the Warhammer transitioned between fleets in a variety of support and patrol positions, even participating in the UEE push to reclaim the Nexus system in the 2930s. Most recently, the Warhammer distinguished itself as the primary combat vessel to repel the outlaw group known as Xenothreat from the Stanton system. Since then, the Warhammer has been placed in dry dock for repairs, but is heading back to active service once this year's Invictus festivities are concluded. The room you're currently seated in is the main briefing room for the entire ship. Based around a hollow volume built by Microtech, the crew gathers here to discuss everything from battle strategies to repair schedules. The marine detail assigned to this ship also uses this room to plan out their boarding actions or outline combat strategies. This room is even acted as a venue for off-duty activities, such as vid screenings or sporting event parties. We hope that you'll take the opportunity to explore the ship and get an up-close look at one of the vanguards of order. On behalf of Captain Metcalf and the rest of the crew, I want to wish you a fantastic Invictus. I hope we see you next year. Hello, welcome to the UEES Warhammer. This javelin class destroyer is originally done by me. class destroyed.
Welcome aboard the UEES Warhammer. As part of this year's Invictus celebrations, I'd like to invite you to take a look around and get an up-close look at an active military vessel. Some of the actual crew members have graciously volunteered their time to explain what life is like aboard the ship. I would like to remind you that the entire ship is not available for exploration. All right, guys, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, now I'm just waiting for tomorrow or the 24th when RSI will be displaying their ships and I'll be able to buy that Orion. Definitely gonna do a full deep dive on that Orion for you guys um, and let you know why I bought it. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's your boy Decades and I'm out.